morning and welcome to Zen Fitz on this beautiful Saturday morning in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. But then you too are the center of the world. So I just wrote a title topic called uh, um, The Age of Irony. Uh, I, I love irony. Uh, irony, is, we always, it's a great comic print. Irony is, makes us laugh. <laughs> irony is metaphor uh, in the sense that it points in two ways. You know, uh, you go, you know, so irony is pointing one way but meaning another. So the joke makes us laugh because it, it contains the coat, the, the coat, con, the joke contains the irony. Because when, when you have uh, like a one-way sign going this way and one-way sign going that way. There's confusion. What way should I go? What, you know, what, what do I do? I'm lost. If I go that way, I'm wrong. If I go that way, I'm wrong. So irony is kind of like um, a situation that is ambiguous creates this terror. Uh, ambiguity, well, ambiguity right here. This is ambiguous. Is it an old woman, the old hag, or is it a princess? Which is it? Can you see both? Can you see one? Can you see neither? I use this all the time, so I'm just going to keep that here for a minute. <laughs> the old hag and the princess. Are you old or are you young? Are you ugly or are you beautiful? This is a gestalt, famous gestalt image. My wife made it into a coaster. <laughs> I love it. I use it all the time. So irony is like that. Uh, the interesting thing about ambiguity, though, like this picture, if you change one, you change the other. So you can't have, uh, you can't fix the old hag. You can't fix the princess, because if you do one, you, and you can't separate them. Each stands alone. You see the old hag. You see the princess. If you see the princess, that's all you see. If you see the old hag, that's all you see. However, if you try to hold the princess, oh, I want to be young. Let me, I just want to keep young. I just want to keep, let me have plastic surgery. Let me get rid of, oh, there's some chemicals. You can buy chemicals now that erase all the wrinkles. See, oh, look, no, oh, oh wrinkle. Oh, no wrinkle. Oh, I want to be young. I want to look in the mirror and see yesterday. But you can't hold it. <laughs> the old hags are going to come out. <laughs> So you can't hold one or the other in ambiguity. It's going wow, wow, wow. It's going to oscillate. It's going to oscillate like a like a mic in an amplifier. You see, and so uh, we can't. You know, we we've got to stabilize it. You got to stabilize the oscillation. Turn the thing off. If you don't stabilize it, the mic will the wow, wow, wow will blow up the amplifier. Ambiguity will blow up your mind. You got to stabilize it. You gotta stabilize it, but it oscillates. So we're in the age of ambiguity. Maybe I should keep holding this up here. Some of you may not see it yet. Uh, the age of ambiguity, the age of irony, seems to be, to me, is that everything is its opposite. That's ironic. <laughs> and so I was writing this morning is that the, the, the lap, I'm looking at with a wide angle lens. And I think we're at the end of the last 50 years. 50 years, say 50, I don't know. But Nixon came in to restore order, law and order, to the chaotic 60s, where the Democrats went mad with civil rights, giving blacks the rights, uh, women rights, uh, protesting the war. They went crazy. They, and some of them even threw bombs. And it was crazy time. The Democrats, the liberals were mad. The Southern Democrats, the Solid South, left the Democratic Party and went to law and order with the Republicans and Nixon. He was a man going to come in, a dirty Harry, gonna, well, he was dirty, <laughs> a dirty Harry to come in and uh, to make these punks grow up. To restore law and order by any means possible. And so then um, 
Then there was the, the, the crazy 70s. Uh, <laughs> remember the 70s? I do. It was an ambiguous time. Men were women and women looked like men. Rock stars were androgynous. Look at a rock star up there. He had long hair, rip, uh, lipstick. This is a man or a woman. You don't know. But the music was explosive, you see. I'll take this down now. Um, so the ambiguity of the 70s uh, brought the stability of Reagan and conservatism and the... Uh, it's interesting, you know, that the... The Southern Democrats left the Democratic Party because of the civil rights, black power. And then the Christians left their little churches uh, outside of politics and came into politics, you see. So both the, the segregationists of the South and the Southern Baptist evangelicals uh, who were now being organized by telemarket, telemarketers a televangelist, you know, like Jim Baker and Jerry Falwell. Uh, these were like the electronic Billy Grahams. Opened these big mega churches, you see. And it was a vast network of literature. And, and, um, and, and the biggest concern I remember of the evangelicals uh, back in uh, when I was talking to my brother-in-law and his sister was their concern about cults and getting rid of and helping people in cults uh, come back to God, you see. There's a lot of effort in that, you see. Uh, so anyway, so you, I, I'm kind of uh, digressing here, but the, it seems to me that everything is flipped here. Where the, the, uh, the Republicans, I remember the Republicans uh, before Nixon, were principles of business sense, wisdom, Financial uh, security, financial wisdom. Uh, they wanted free trade, immigration. They wanted environmental protection. Uh, all these things was what the Republicans stood for, and they also stood as a break against the wild and crazy Democrats, who were passionate. You know, kind of like the English holding the line against the crazy Irish and Scots, you see, these tribal people. So the Republicans were kind of like the Redcoats, kind of like the English. Class order, law and order, business sense, trade, stability, you see. Democrats come, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Running off on this passion or that passion. So the Republicans contained the passion, but you need passion. So what the Republicans did was invite passion into their cool, English, conservative, uh, wealthy uh, clubs, you see. They got these clubs of the businessmen smoking their pipes and reading the newspaper and making policy. The Republican club, you see. Well, they invited in these passionate rebels, these passionate Southerners, religious passion, uh, segregation passion, and they brought it, come on in, come on in. Well, it flipped everything. Because now, see, the Republicans always used to be uh, originalists. You remember hearing that? Interpret the Constitution originally. Don't add anything. Don't add any rights. There's no gay marriage rights in the Constitution. There's no there, there, there's no uh, uh, women's rights in the Constitution. Interpret the Constitution originally. Don't mess around with it and add stuff, you see. So now the Democrats are interpreting the Constitution. It, the Republicans, so, so the Constitution says, you know, if, if you have a, a president who breaks the law uh, and abuses his power, uh, impeach him. That's your duty. But the Republicans have added a clause which says, never mind. <laughs> so now the Republicans are against immigration, against free trade, against uh, financial uh, 
not security, but, but the business sense and exploding the deficit. So in other words, they are everything that they used to accuse the Democrats of. And now they're accusing him of interpreting the Constitution. So everything is flipped. This is the ironic age, you see. It's ironic that everything that the Republicans were in the past are now their exact opposite. Everything, the coin is flipped. See, you have a coin. Truth um, is a coin. Well, it has heads and tails, you see. All right. So the Republicans used to be the head of the nation, the smart head. And now they're the passionate head of the nation. But now they're the passionate blood of the nation. And the Democrats are the head, the cool head the constitutional head. Isn't that interesting? The coin is flipped, you see. And that's ironic. Yeah, at least I think, you know. And, and the only, it's a mad, it's become a mad world. A mad, mad world where everything that used to be this is now that. And everything is that is now this. And this creates anxiety. This creates instability. This creates, it's like when you get a new map and the old map is no longer any good. Which map do you follow? Yesterday's map? Today's map? The maps are no good. All the signposts that we've gone by are all switched. Somebody changed the signpost. I'm going this way, but now I end up there. I go there and I end up here, you see. So we're in a great age of confusion and anxiety, terror, and violence. Because when you, when you, you get angry, when you can't, when you don't know what to do and what's real. That was the 70s. Every, are you a man or a woman? You got long hair and lipstick. What is that? Or women look like men. Men look like women. It was a great ambiguity. 70s, but it was so rich in music and creativity, you see. Rich in violence and rich in creativity. Anyway, my nickname is Digress. <laughs> So checking my time, my time is up. So thanks for dropping in for today's Zen Fit. Begin to understand and appreciate irony. The only thing you can do with irony is laugh. The only thing you can do when the world is mad is laugh. And then you'll know what to do. Then you'll be okay. You know what to do when you don't take insanity seriously. You become sane. Thanks for dropping in. Oops.